Bang, bang. What's going on, guys? Hope you guys are really excited about this interview. I really enjoyed it. I think you will as well. But before we get into that, make sure that you like this video so that more people on YouTube can find it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And don't forget that BlockFi is the sponsor today. They've got three products. You can buy and sell crypto on their crypto exchange. You can deposit crypto and earn up to 8.6% APY in an interest-bearing account. Or you can deposit crypto and take out a US dollar loan against your crypto collateral. You can use the description right here, or you can go to BlockFi.com slash POMP to learn more. All right, let's get into this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this one. All right, guys, bang, bang. I've got Brad back uh, from Unstoppable Domains. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. For sure. Let's just remind people, uh, Unstoppable Domains, you guys are essentially creating human readable domains, but you explain it way better than I do. So just what is Unstoppable Domains mission uh, and kind of what have you guys built so far? Yeah, so we build domains on blockchains. We believe that users should be in control on the internet, uh, not companies. And that starts with your domain, uh, which is like your identity online. So you control your domain. It's an NFT stored inside of your wallet, uh, just like a cryptocurrency. Nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can move it around. Nobody can make updates to it uh, other than you. Very different than a traditional domain name, which is stored by GoDaddy. GoDaddy can take it away from you. GoDaddy can get hacked. GoDaddy can get tricked and somebody else can be making updates or changing it or doing something else. Uh, and what's what's cool about blockchain domains as opposed to regular domains, they have all of these different use cases. Uh, one that is close to my heart and close to the, uh, the crypto community's heart uh, is that it's kind of like a decentralized Venmo. You can send me money to brad.crypto. You can send me Bitcoin or ETH or any other cryptocurrency. And you can check out my website at brad.crypto, same domain does both things. We'll do many more things in the future. About 700,000 of these have been registered so far. We've been at it for a couple of years. Uh, and yeah. So one of the things that uh, just immediately jumps to mind, and we've talked about it in prior episodes that you've been on, uh, is this idea that uh, the wallet addresses uh, are really you know, confusing. They're long strings of letters and numbers, uh, very similar to what IP addresses used to be, where people would have to type in you know, 121.10.746, whatever. Uh, and then when somebody came up with human readable, so I could just type in www.google.com, that made the internet much, much more usable, uh, much more user-friendly, and obviously uh, led to an explosion of, uh, of various types of products and, and companies that are built on the internet. Uh, you guys are essentially doing the exact same thing here, uh, but it really serves two purposes. One is for wallets, so I can send money to you know pomp.crypto, uh, or it can serve as a domain name. Uh, but I know that recently you guys uh, announced this brand new uh, partnership with, uh, with Opera. Uh, so maybe let's just start kind of with like, what is Opera? Uh, and why do most people not know what that is? So Opera Browser is, is, is actually one of the top five browsers in the, in the world. It's just not as popular in the U.S. Now, there was a period of time, I think, uh, maybe 10 years ago, where techies in the U.S. were really, uh, really into it. But uh, they, have kind of, uh, they have kind of moved to other browsers. But in Europe, it's extremely popular. Around the world, it's extremely popular. I believe it's the most popular browser in Nigeria now, which is also one of the top countries for crypto. Um, so I think there's potentially, uh, potentially a link there. Uh, Opera Browser has leaned extremely heavily into crypto, and I think all of, essentially all of the browsers uh, that are not owned by giant trillion dollar companies are looking deeply at crypto right now. Uh, and that's just something that's just uh, that should be on the entire crypto community's radar. That the browser community is looking really closely at our space, building wallets, yeah. uh, trying to get into the crypto business in any number of ways. Opera's been doing that for the past couple of years. They've they've, they've been on the forefront and. Uh, now they're uh, now they're going deeper, and what deeper looks like is uh, you can now uh, resolve .crypto websites uh, inside of all of Opera Browser's properties. So this is uh, over 300 million internet users that can now just type in a .crypto, and it works just like a .com. Uh, it also works for the payment use case, but this is um, this is kind of a kind of a big deal for uh, for decentralized websites. Yeah. When I was at Facebook in 2014, 2015, uh, we used to make uh, fairly like simple changes uh, to the user experience, whether it was just, you know, shortening the number of clicks it took to do an activity, uh, making something a little bit more e uh, easily accessible or visible. Uh, and there would be these massive increases in usage on the Opera browser specifically. Uh, some of that, I think, was due to kind of older versions of phones. Um, and, you know, people weren't walking around with an iPhone. Uh, but also some of it was just the sheer size 
size of the audience, right? And so uh, I think you've said that one tenth of all internet users use the Opera browser. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, it's like so. The, I think the published number is a little over three hundred million. So I don't know the exact number of current internet users, but I think it's pretty close to one tenth. Yeah. And so when you think about uh, kind of the importance for crypto, is there a thought process here that like the emerging countries uh, and developing countries are actually better suited to adopt uh, these types of technologies? Is that's a better place to uh, to focus on or what really kind of drove the uh, the idea of between uh, going and, and doing this partnership with Opera? You know, I think that there's a lot of opportunity around the world. Us as a company, you know, we're a San Francisco based tech company, it's just easier for us to operate in US and Europe. So that is kind of where we've been focusing, but that's mostly because of language. Most of us are English speakers. And so it's hard for us to market in other languages, not because there's not amazing opportunities there. Um, so Opera Browser for us is, is probably mostly about the, the European market. And there's of course other, other, uh, other things that we're working on that are going to be directly impacting the US market in terms of, uh, terms of browsers. Um, so that's been our focus. Um, but there's there's a ton of opportunity there, and I'm sure we're we're going to get there eventually as we uh, as we continue to grow. Yeah, and so it will people be able to use the domains for the exact same things that they can use on other browsers in the Opera browser? Or are there any sort of obstacles uh, to the the full usage of uh, of the product? No ifs, ands, or buts. No change this setting. No make this update. Uh, you just do what you would normally tell somebody what you would normally tell them about a website. Hey, go check out my website. And what's so fascinating, what's fascinating to me about this is uh, in the kind of Western developed world, you still have to go to uh, a Web3 experience or some kind of the, the decentralized web in some cases. Here, if this is the default browser for, you know, again, a tenth of the Internet's users in a lot of these countries, now by proxy, uh, Unstoppable Domains essentially becomes the default domain system that they could use if you continue to see penetration in the markets, right? Absolutely. And, and is the thought process that um, people will choose unstoppable domains uh, utilized via the Opera browser over kind of the traditional domain system simply from censorship resistance and, and uh, some of the benefits that we previously talked about? I think it's more about consumers having control of what they're doing online. So it might not necessarily be that you're concerned about being censored. It's that you're concerned about you having complete ownership because you know all around the world we have these these registrars that have all these kind of crazy laws and regulations and you know they get they the the amount of hacking that happens amongst these registrars around the world would would would, would shock people uh, i mentioned godaddy probably earlier godaddy had a big hack in november of 2020 and that's probably the most one of the most secure domain name registrars in the world so there's just all kinds of problems baked into this baked into this world but the other thing is is that you just can't, you can't prove anything about the user because of this security problem, because you have this custodian. Like you don't know a hundred percent that the, the web content that you're looking at is presented to you by the person that you were intending to go and to go and see. So I think blockchains in general, like their superpower is about verification. Like, you know, a hundred percent certain things about what you're looking at, what you're using, who you're interacting with, et cetera. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely fascinating. Another thing that you guys have done recently is you've basically empowered the ability for people to use their dot uh, crypto domains to create these like NFT galleries. And you've shown me a couple of them and they're pretty damn cool. Explain kind of what the thought process here was and then what the actual technology allows someone to do. So I think it, it all comes back to this idea of verification. So I've got brad.crypto, I've got a bunch of NFTs in my wallet, and we built this feature that allows you to uh, generate a website on IPFS, a decentralized website, it takes a couple of clicks, super easy, you can do it right now, and you can go and see my collection. So the app, what it does is it goes and looks inside my wallet, finds the NFTs that I own, and displays that as an art gallery. And I've got one up right now at brad.crypto, and what you know is when you're looking at brad.crypto, you know that the owner of the domain is also the owner of those specific assets. And that's something that you don't get with web two. That's something you don't get with the traditional web is that you don't have any assurances about the content that you're looking at. And so in this new internet world, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around on the internet and I'm gonna flex. I'm gonna say, here are the things that I own, they're digital sets, here are the things that I own, and I'm gonna be able to prove to you 100%, yeah, these are actually mine. It's not just pictures. It's not just copies. Uh, I'm not somebody standing in. I'm not a fake identity. I am the person that owns this stuff. Um, and I think that's the that's the secret superpower 
uh, of the decentralized web uh, that uh, I think everyone should be focusing on. And how much of this is going to be dependent on you guys building out kind of uh, functionality um, or some of this uh, kind of auto generation versus users can do that themselves, right? Like, could somebody have gone and done this before you guys added the functionality on the NFT gallery uh, using their own dot crypto domain? Or is it something where you guys, um, you know, as you kind of push forward, you'll continue to launch more and more functionality and it'll just make uh, the dot crypto and the unstoppable domains much more attractive to people? It's all open source. Anybody can build whatever they want. People have built their own versions. I've seen like virtual galleries that are like in VR where you can go and check out people's art. I've seen all kinds of cool stuff. The problem, I mean, most of that stuff's not commercial ready. So what 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 our goal has been with all of this stuff is that we want to see the market. Like we've got, you know, we've been sitting around, you know, jamming on ideas uh, for how this stuff could work, you know, over the past couple of years. And we just want to show people some examples to inspire and get people kind of get the get the wheel turning. Uh, but ultimately, like the work is going to be done uh, by thousands and thousands of web developers, just like with just like with the traditional web. Like we're not we're not a web company. You know, our, our goal is domain names. Uh, and this is really just a way to to kind of get the creative juices flowing. Yeah. What, what's been the most surprising thing to you, uh, both from the opera launch and also um, the NFT galleries? Is there anything that just kind of blew you away or, or was something you weren't expecting, but it's pretty cool? People are obsessed uh, with this, uh, with, with the art that they own. And I, I have not personally been, you know, gone super deep into, into art. It's something that, you know, I've had friends and family that were, you know, big fans and they've kind of, uh, evangelized it and tried to, to, to get me excited. And, and I, 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 I get it and I appreciate it and I get involved, but uh, I have just the amount of uh, emotional energy that it can grab from people. Like I've seen just with some of these galleries, I mean, I've seen people sit there and study a single gallery for 15 or 20 minutes. And like that, that's a lot of time on site. You know, if you're, you know, if you're building, if you built a website and you get somebody to stay there for 15 minutes, that's not bad on the internet. You know, I think average time is like 10 seconds or something like that. So just the, the addictiveness of, of seeing this stuff has been probably the, the, the most surprising part to me. I think the second part, and this is kind of like the macro crypto part is how deep browsers want to go into crypto. Like, and this is just something I can't emphasize enough. Like these companies are looking for a path forward and they see crypto as a core strategy for them, whether that's, you know, building a wallet and enabling financial services. And, and these companies have tons of users. Like, you know, you, you add a zero or add two zeros on a crypto app. Um, these are not necessarily you know, native crypto users. These are just internet users, but there's so many people in these companies and these, and these companies have really low margins. So they're saying we have this, super active user base. Uh, they have all these issues on the internet. Uh, crypto can help solve them. Let's go add a wallet. And then all of a sudden we can enable all this stuff. Uh, Opera is an example of that. Brave is an example of that. Uh, and I think we're going to see more of that. And that, that piece right there um, is just like, I mean, that's just another just massive, massive community uh, that the crypto world is onboarding and has been onboarding over the past year or two. And it's, it's just one of the many uh, massive onboarding waves that we're seeing in crypto. Yeah. What's fascinating to me about this entire thing is uh, you get what most people would have thought as kind of legacy infrastructure um, that is still run by technologists. And the technologists understand the benefits of the uh, technology stack that's being built in crypto. And, and they're starting to say, hey, how can I incorporate this into that legacy product? And so the Opera browser is actually a fantastic uh, kind of example of this where they've got the built-in user base, they've got distribution, they understand that they've got centralized infrastructure, uh, and they've got some kind of failure points along the way. And if they start to actually uh, replace it with decentralized uh, type infrastructure or crypto infrastructure, you can really actually kind of supercharge your legacy business and adapt and thrive in this new world rather than simply sit there, take it on the chin and be disrupted. And they're all, they're all looking at Chrome and these giant companies. And those companies aren't innovating. Like those companies don't care about their browser business. Their browser business is not, that's not where they, that's not where they make their money. So there's not any reason for the large incumbents to uh, to go and innovate, and then there's this massive, massive, you know, new, you know, Web three oriented, crypto oriented uh, user base that is looking for tools, and a browser is just a very natural place. Like, 
if you're thinking about like where to store your assets, uh, maybe even where to store your domain so you can be using it for, for various things online, like that's a very natural, natural place. So like having money inside of your browser uh, is kind of a no brainer for users. And that's something that was you know, just started being enabled over the past couple of years. Uh, and that's, that's your wallet following you around on the internet, all in one application. So it's, when you think about it that way, it, it, it feels somewhat inevitable that those things would, would come together. Um, but, uh, but now it's kind of finally, you know, out there in the market and you can play with it. Yeah. The other part that I think is so fascinating is when you integrate a lot of this crypto infrastructure in with legacy products uh, and it's done in a thoughtful way, uh, now all the user doesn't necessarily have to go uh, kind of be indoctrinated into crypto infrastructure. They don't have to go do a lot of kind of the nuanced stuff that uh, makes the user experience and adoption uh, more difficult or has more friction. You basically are getting them to onboard onto the infrastructure, but they're doing it through a user interface that they're uh, very familiar with. They may not even know that anything's changed, and therefore you can drastically increase adoption uh, at a much faster pace, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. What uh, what, what do you want people to know, or, or what should people go do now that uh, you guys have this Opera integration and you have the NFT gallery? Uh, well, first of all, you should go check it out. Go check. You can go check out Brad.Crypto as a starting point, but there's of course tons of uh, tons of other websites out there. Mine's nothing special, um, but you should go. But you should go check out uh, check out. A, there's a bunch of new websites coming out. We'll be posting about them, um, and go launch your own. It's like it's like three clicks. Um, all you got to do is have your domain in the same uh, same wallet as your NFT art collection, and then boom, click click, and you're live. I love it. Listen, you guys are uh, continue to push the pace of innovation. I think that uh, human readable domains obviously uh, are a huge leap forward. So please keep it up uh, because I think that you guys can help onboard uh, literally hundreds of millions of new users to uh, to this ecosystem uh, by simply just making it easier to use the infrastructure. So uh, I've been uh, cheering you guys on from the sideline for a while. I will continue to do that and uh, appreciate you coming on. Where can people go and follow you uh, or learn more about Unstoppable Domains? Yeah, go check out uh, at Unstoppable Web on Twitter. That's a good place to follow whatever's going on. And also check out UnstoppableDomains.com. Awesome, Brad. Listen, thank you so much for doing this. We'll have to do it again in the future. Thanks a lot.